What's up, gamers? So, I'm working on a fishing game, but not just any fishing game, a spooky fishing game. Which I'm sure you'll know all about if you watched my last video where I go over the idea. But if you didn't, uh, I mean, it's a spooky fishing game. That's kind of it. Now, so far, I've added <laughs> this water, which I mean, looks like water, right? I mean, it's uh, blue. That's kind of all water is, right? It's just like a blue plane. And you know, well, this would technically work for the game. I could use this and have this be the water for the game. I want it to look a little bit better. So today I will be trying to make this water look <laughs> good. And I will be doing that with Unity Shader Graph, which is kind of just an alien language that I don't understand at all, which is why I'm just gonna watch a tutorial on how to make water with Unity Shader Graph. And I mean, hopefully that just works. I don't see why it wouldn't. Stealing is always a, is always a great strategy. So that's what I'm gonna go do. And I will let you know once I've got some okay looking water. All right, so I've spent a while learning about how to make water in Unity. And as you can see, I mean, it looks better than it was before. As you can see, Gunk is in the middle of this, um, the middle of this lake. So what I basically did, I found a tutorial by Unity themselves showing how to make, how to make water. Look at that, look at that good water. So that's what I'm trying to make, but with like a spooky tone because this isn't just regular water. This is scary water. This is what I've got so far. The only problem, uh, it's a little bit boring. <laughs> it, it just looks like, uh, a flat plane. And that's because it is at the moment. That's the next thing I need to change. And the way I'm pretty sure I do that is I need to one, add a texture. I kind of stole it here. You know what? I'll show you this. I stole a texture just to test it out, right? So if I add in a texture here, boom, you can see it gives it, it gives it a little bit of texture. I guess that's why it's called a texture. I never really thought about that. Anyway, I can like adjust the scale of it to like change it. And that kind of like, you know, looks okay. Now you can also animate this to make it look better, which I guess I need to do. And you can do that with some normals as well, apparently. There's a whole lot of texture stuff you can do to kind of make water look good. Now you might be wondering, why don't you add some waves? And well, I looked into that. I also watched this video by Ace Rolla. If you don't know who this guy is, He's kind of like a graphics genius. I don't really understand it. And he's talking about how to make waves, but like, look at all these calculations. Look at all this math. It gets so complicated. I don't understand any of it. So I'm not really gonna try to be honest. I mean, I kind of understand the basics of it, but I have no idea how to actually do it. So I think I'm just gonna have to kind of fake it and make it kind of look like there's waves when there's not. But yeah, I think the next thing I need to do is actually just make a water texture. And then I can animate the water to like kind of have some movement to it. And then maybe I can do some like displacement stuff to have like little ripples, but I don't know if I can do waves. Waves, I think gets pretty complicated. But yeah, that's basically, this is basically where I'm at. Making good progress, I think. I don't really know, to be honest. I have no idea how complicated this is gonna get. Maybe I just keep it like this. Maybe I just keep it like this. <laughs> All right, so I have worked on the water and as you can see, I think it's quite a bit better. I mean, it, it looks like water, right? And look, now I can watch Gunk realistically <laughs> drown in the water. Except somehow he's really good at swimming and can just float there. So he's not drowning, unfortunately. I tried to get rid of him, but he won't, <laughs> he doesn't go away. He survives somehow. So yeah, as you can probably see, I added some little wave movements, which kind of looks like water, which is kind of cool. And wait, let me show you something. Let me show you something. I can make it even better. If I go to the water shader and you know, I just up the displacement strength a little bit. Boom, I get some, I get some really big waves and look now gunk. He's actually drowning. Look at him down there. But yeah, I mean, there's definitely more things I could probably do to improve this. But I mean, I kind of want to make a game here. I don't want to make a water simulation. So I think this is pretty good but gunk he's i really wanted him to drown but he survives he's he's just too strong he's too good of a swimmer man he can't drown i mean it definitely looks better than before i think it actually looks like water now there's some foam around the edges there is some textures and i think it's all pretty cool but the problem is as you can see here gunk is just kind of chilling in the water and i, I kind of wanted him to drown and to watch him struggle but he's just sitting there so i guess he's just a really good swimmer you know so basically right now all of these waves in the water are just all visual which means that there is no buoyancy there is no floating there is none of that it's all just visual that's fine and everything but i kind of want there to be some floating and some buoyancy and some cool things like that but from the research i've done which is very minimal it's kind of complicated to actually make things float especially because all of this is done through this shader which is basically me just following two tutorials on youtube and mashing them together to create one big water shader <laughs> i don't know what any of this does oh well, i know what some of it does but like barely and right here this is like the 
wave creation function, but because the water movement's all through a shader, I'm pretty sure that means it's all done on the GPU, which means you can't really access it from the CPU, which is where scripts are run. So there are some complications. I can't really get access to the position of the water, but there is a solution, I'm pretty sure. I haven't done it, so I don't know if it works, but what I'm pretty sure I can do is just take this shader graph shader stuff, this magic, I don't understand it, but I can take this, convert it into code, and then use that code just to reference a position and then get the height of the water, which can then let me create things that float. I don't know if that makes any sense. It might not, but I'm pretty sure that's what I have to do. The, the only problem is how do I turn this into code? It's a bunch of runes and magic. They're just a bunch of squares that do things. How do I make this into code? I don't know. I don't know, but I'll figure it out probably. And then I can finally watch Gunk struggle and drown in front of me. Is that wrong? I don't think it's wrong. I think Gunk deserves it. So that's my next challenge. Shouldn't be hard. Probably, maybe. I mean, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's really hard. I don't actually know what I'm doing. Okay, so I have spent some time programming. And by that, I mean like a day or so. And I have pretty much gotten the buoyancy system working. Not perfectly, but like, you know, good enough. So I will demonstrate with this cube. It will fall into the water and it will float. And let's see, let me, let me hit play and let's see. Boom, and it's floating. Look at that, I can like move it, I can rotate. The rotate, okay, the rotation isn't really working that well, but you know, everything else is pretty much working. Like it floats pretty well, it can go under the water. You can like bring it above the water and drop it. And it mostly works. I guess the rotation doesn't, but everything else pretty much does. Now, you might be wondering, how did you create such a cool system? With a lot of pain and a lot of torture, it was really, it, well, it wasn't that difficult, but it was kind of pretty difficult because it's kind of complicated, but I will explain it. Now, the first thing you need to do, you need to be able to get the water level at a certain position. So like the position of the cube, you need to know the water level at that position, which doesn't sound that complicated, but for some reason it is kind of complicated because all of the positions are controlled through this shader and you can't really access any of this information in a script. So it gets kind of complicated. So you might be wondering, if you can't access the water height in a script, how do you get the water level? And the answer is, uh, Kind of simple, but kind of complicated. Basically, I just copied in the nodes that control the water's position into this different shader that is a custom render texture shader, which basically outputs this result into a material texture right here, as you can see. And then you basically put this texture into a custom render texture, and then you make a script right here that takes the pixels from that custom render texture, puts it into a texture 2D, and then do some math and stuff to get the UV coordinates based on the texture of the world position on the plane of the water. And then you can get the pixel color. And then that gets you a kind of an approximation of the height of the water. If that doesn't make sense, it's because I don't really understand it very well, but it works mostly. There, There's like some areas it doesn't really work, but I mean, it like mostly works. Look at this. It mostly works. So uh, if you're trying to make your own water system, uh, hopefully my ramblings have given you a little bit of insight into how to do it. And if you have gotten insight from my ramblings, please, please tell me what you heard because I would like to understand what I did. But that's not even the final step because after you get the water height, you need to actually make the floating system. And I'll admit here, I didn't create this all on my own. I watched a couple of tutorials, which I will link down in the description. But basically what you do is you add forces based on how under the water the, the object is. And then if you have multiple, if you have big objects, you can do like multiple forces spread out across all those objects. No, across all those. Oh, I don't know, man. And it's actually not that complicated. It's just a lot of like, it's a lot of stuff, you know? It's a lot of stuff. But then you put it all together and you get objects that can float. And here, I'll show you with this big object as well. I have a, I created a big, a big object. It's kind of like a boat, you know, because eventually I'm going to add a boat. So here, let me show you. Let me show you. Kapow! And look at that. I have a big object that can float. Now, the big objects are kind of a little bit harder, but it works out. You basically just have to go to these floater objects. There's one for each corner and you just mess around with all these values until it like looks kind of good and then it works which is cool. And now that all of that very annoying programming is done, I can finally watch Gunk drown. Drown! Okay, he's he's really buoyant, so he can't drown. Let me, this isn't good enough. This isn't good. This isn't good. I want, I want to watch him struggle. Floating strength, decrease it. Yes. Oh, he sank under the ground. 
He's not even drowning. He's just falling into the void. You know what? I'll take it. Gunk is defeated by the water. Yeah, that's basically the water done. I can't really think of anything else I really need to add to it for this game. I mean, it looks like water. It acts like water. I mean, that's kind of good enough, I think. So next, I'm probably just going to add in like a boat and like rowing and stuff. So there's actual like gameplay. All I have right now is just a, a body of water. Not a very good game so far. And if you think this water is pretty cool and want to download it for yourself, it'll be on my Patreon. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Until next time, peace out, gamers. Thank you